Once a month, my good friend Andrew and I head to the local pub after work to eat a burger, drink beer, and discuss various topics while watching a Friday night soccer game. Tonight, we watched the Brisbane Broncos game against the Melbourne Storm. As Queensland natives, both Andrew and I were, of course, rooting for the Broncos. Before the game started, we ordered food. Andrew had steak and I had wood-roasted pizza, and we both enjoyed our food while finishing our second pint of beer. More accurately, I was enjoying a pint of beer while Andrew was sipping a soft drink as he was on duty today. He was a senior constable at our local police station, having been transferred six months ago from HQ after a nasty divorce. I, on the other hand, was a lawyer, had just found a good partner, was married to the love of my life and considered myself a generally nice guy despite my profession. Andrew and I were arguing about strategy, or lack thereof, when kicking the ball into touch in the other side of the pitch when he got the call. Sorry, buddy, Andrew said to me a minute later, putting the phone down. I've got to go. I'll see you next Friday, he asked. I waved him off as he tried to hand me $50 to pay for my food. Don't worry about it, I said. Bring a bottle of something good to my place next Friday night when we watch the Cowboys take apart the Tigers. He grinned put the money back in his pocket, picked up his jacket and looked at me seriously. Then his gaze lingered on something over my shoulder for a moment. Just be careful. I take it you noticed that jock following you? He's been staring at you since he walked in five minutes after we did. I nodded, taking a sip of my beer. Yeah, he's been staring at me, I replied. I know he's attractive as hell and all, but he's definitely not my type. Andrew laughed. Don't stress. Joe's got your back if you need help he said, nodding toward the bartender who had known us for years. I didn't turn and look, but I could guess that Joe also responded to Andrew with a nod. Andrew left the pub a minute later and I leaned back in my chair with a mug of cold beer and concentrated on the game. In my experience, Australian soccer is a pretty unique game when it comes to national sports. They don't pounce like they do in American soccer, and the sides are pretty much set up for most of the game. It's a full-contact sport in which the teams fully battle in two 40-minute halves. Today's game was very tight. Melbourne had home field advantage and have performed much better than the Broncos this season. But tonight, I was hoping we could pull the game out as the Broncos were on fire. They were ahead at the moment. I was watching a fifth-down kick that Melbourne was executing from their own 20-meter line when a guy who Andrew noticed was watching me sat down in the seat vacated by Andrew. In the evening, we chose a spot in the center of the pub perfect for two people to eat and socialize. Andrew called the guy a jock, and that's what he looked like. He looked like he was one of those guys who worked out at the gym three times a day, pushing his body to the extreme. He had bleached blonde hair, his neck was out of the question, and even when he was relaxed, the veins in his arms were clearly visible, as if he'd been working out for the last three hours. I cast a quick glance at him, noting the tight white t-shirt as he sat down with his tonic water most likely a mix with gin or vodka, and I tried not to snort at the sight of the stereotypical typical dumbass as I continued to watch the game. I cursed as I watched my team fumble the ball, leading to a forward pass and a penalty against them. You know, I'm sleeping with her, the jock suddenly said without any introduction. He wasn't watching the game or anything around him, completely focused on me. I gave him a sidelong glance. Excuse me? I asked as if I hadn't heard him. You heard me he said with a big grin on his face. I told you I was sleeping with your wife and she likes it. I was silent for a moment, looking into his eyes. All he did was smirk back at me. Oh, and he tensed one of his biceps. A not-so-subtle hint that he'd wipe the floor with me if I tried anything. I stared at him for another moment before the noise of the game distracted me. The Broncos had just made a beautiful breakthrough and came within 20 yards of getting a try. I hummed, a little in disgust. Nice try, asshole. I focused fully on the game again and took a sip of my beer. It's true, he said, grinning at me again. Your beautiful red-headed wife. You know, the one with the sparkly blue eyes and the pretty freckles that run down her back. Or how about I tell you about the little tattoo? Twin dolphins leaping over the moon on her left rear shoulder blade? His statement made me look away from the game and look at him. He smiled victoriously, realizing he had caught my attention. Yeah, my wife has a tattoo like that. All right, asshole, I asked him. What do you want? Now he was grinning like a conquering hero, and I was looking at him like a used piece of gum stuck to the sole of my shoe. But the jock didn't notice my gloomy stare. I heard the other visitors groan and booed as the Melbourne storm made the break, 
running almost the entire length of the field, scoring four points just under the posts, bringing the score between the two teams within an attempt of each other. It really was a close game. Just that I'm going to take it from you, he told me matter-of-factly, still completely unconcerned about the game. I love her firm body. I love the feel of my male organ penetrating deep inside her as she moans, demanding more. I mean, last week I ran my hand over her tight abs as she lay there. She's a naughty girl who knows how to make love. For that alone, I'll take her away from you. His statement made me think of Janie, the hours we spent making love, how I loved looking into those deep blue eyes as her legs wrapped around my waist and she milked me as hard as she could. The more I thought about her, the more I smiled at the description of the jock. That feeling of ecstasy I felt at the thought of my wife. Unlike the jerk, I had known my wife since fourth grade when her family moved to the neighborhood. Within a week of her going to school, we became best friends. Our mutual attraction was too strong to ignore. When puberty hit and hormones kicked in, it was a given that we started dating. Our families were fine with it, offering only token resistance to our budding romance. I still remember the day Janie and I gave ourselves to each other, the awkwardness of our connection despite months of mutual touching and exploring each other. It was crazy. Late at night, somewhere in the boondocks, afraid we'd be caught, and the understanding looks my parents cast at us over the next month. Those memories were precious to me, to her. This guy had no idea about that. I remembered how that event had brought us closer together. Since then, most of the time you couldn't even squeeze a piece of paper between us, even when we were both in university. We were both driven individuals. I was in law school and Janie was in nursing. But that didn't hinder our affection for each other at all. I remembered our wedding, that amazing day when Janie and I officially belonged to each other. Our families celebrated that union. Then I thought about some of our recent problems. But I don't think we've lost our love. If anything, I think we've grown closer. I remembered our last argument and smiled. Janie started to undress and I asked what she was doing. Then she told me to get naked too because our opinions obviously didn't agree. I barely concealed a smile at her demand. The sight of my wife's nakedness never failed to elicit a reaction in me and she knew it. Janie had this rule that we had to argue naked because then nothing would be hidden. I smiled absent-mindedly as the jock watched me, unaware that I was remembering the discussion and what happened after our disagreement ended. He apparently got tired of waiting and snapped his fingers in front of my face for a good ten seconds before it brought me out of my erotic memories and back to the present. When my eyes focused, I smiled at the man who proudly announced that he was sleeping with my wife. I watched him lose his ardor a little, not expecting such a reaction. So, I said, taking another sip of beer, how do you know the woman you're sleeping with is my wife? He fidgeted a little as we sat in the pub chairs after my answer then straightened up as if preparing for a fight. I saw you driving around town with her last Friday, he told me almost dejectedly, as if it was unusual for Janie to see me, her husband. You two were next to me at a stoplight and laughing with the windows down in your fucking Mustang, joking around like you didn't give a shit about the world. It royally pissed me off when you drove off and she didn't even look in my direction to see me in my much nicer Mercedes right next to you. I watched as he aggressively took a sip of his drink. I noticed a lime in it nice. He smiled when he saw me watching him before placing the glass in front of him in an overly expressive gesture. I started staring at the screen again, not giving him the reaction he wanted. So I decided to find you and have a little chat, he told me, pretending that I was still looking at him, to let you know that I'm about to launch a massive offensive against her, and that there's no way you're holding her back for long. I nearly spill my already half-empty beer at his comment. Massive offense? I snickered and turned to him, ignoring the fact that the Broncos were going to use the attempted play in the far right corner of the field. Seriously? I said. What kind of idiot throws words like massive offense in front of people? You're not some suave Casanova that women beg to take them to bed. Hell, you're not even handsome. You're a pumped up, drugged up asshole who thinks too much, thinks too much of himself, spends too much money on girls and has a male organ that's probably so small because you're on steroids that you probably wonder why you can never make a woman moan. For a while, he sat there with his mouth open, unable to believe I dared insult him. But I was distracted again when I heard the screams as the Broncos crossed the line. I quickly joined the applause that erupted in the pub, ignoring the jerk as my team roared to victory. The jock suddenly jumped up, his face darkening at my indifference, and he started hurling insults. 
He was about to reach across the table when I finished my beer and set it down loudly on the varnished wooden tabletop. Sit down, Cody, I said sharply, suddenly calling him by his first name. You don't understand shit, do you? I said, looking at the confused guy. My wife loves me and only me. There's never been room in her heart for another man, and there never will be. We've been together since we were eight years old, and we'll be together until we're 80. So if you think you have any idea who she is, you're in for a disappointment. I'm still sleeping with your wife, Cody grinned, trying to regain some of his rapidly dwindling confidence. I stood up and crossed my arms. I'll pretend I didn't hear that. In fact, I'd love it if I could pretend that you and I never talked. But I can't, I said ominously. So sit down, shut up, and I'll tell you what happens next. Cody swallowed, fear appearing in his eyes for the first time, but he didn't sit down. You'll get a text later tonight telling you that it's over, that you're done, that she's done with you, and she never wants to see you again. Then you'll forget you ever met her in the first place, or nothing good will come of it for you. He took it as a physical threat and continued to stand, trying to appear imposing. If I hadn't looked him in the eye, he might have succeeded. But looking at him, all I saw was a bully, and I wasn't impressed. I was pissed off because he was sticking his nose where it didn't belong. What are you going to do about it, you little brat? He asked sneeringly. Several people in the pub were now looking at us, simultaneously trying to watch the last few minutes of the soccer match I'd missed thanks to this idiot. Joe looked at me from behind the bar and I shook my head slightly, letting him know I was fine. Obviously, it was a David versus Goliath kind of thing. He was big and strong, but Cody didn't know I had rocks and a slingshot. Cody Williams, 29 years old, still lives with his parents in Shorncliffe, I told him in my professional voice. Works as a laborer at Stone and Sons, engaged to Brianna Phoebe. I leaned in and whispered, her daddy who owns the place. I smiled and leaned back. There was a look of surprise on his face. See, Cody, I know all about you. I've known about you for a long time. I know your habits, where you work, how you work. I know about the three women you've been seeing behind your fiancé's back. I know how much money you've spent that doesn't belong to you. I know you think you're a player, but for all that, you're afraid Brianna will see you as a worthless, lazy shit and dump you. You're worried about keeping her in the dark so you can use her money to keep buying the banned steroids you're pumping your body full of. Cody took a step back. His body language told me he was panicking right now. Now you have to realize, Cody, that while I know a lot about you, you obviously know nothing about me. I told him calmly. You see, I'm a lawyer. I specialize in criminal law. I help put bad guys in jail. I always recognize bad guys when I see them, I said, looking him in the eye. And I know everything about them before I talk to them or they talk to me. I was silent for a moment, letting my statement penetrate the skull of the overpumped buffoon standing in front of me. He still had nothing to say worried as the conversation continued to roll downhill for him. So let me give you some advice, I continued caustically. You have to do what the message you get later says. Break up with all women or I'll represent Brianna pro bono when she takes what's left of your pathetic pride. I turned and looked at the screen as the final siren sounded. I shook my head. While I was talking to this idiot, the Broncos had lost, giving up just one field goal. Annoyed at the loss and the idiot keeping me company, I grabbed my jacket from the back of my chair and threw it over my shoulders, glaring at the stunned jerk across the room as I threaded my arms through the sleeves. I waved at Joe behind the bar and walked around the table, stopping right behind Cody, who was now sitting dejected and knew the conversation hadn't gone the way he thought it would when he sat down. Do as the message says, Cody, I repeated with a note of threat in my voice, or I'll make sure you spend the next three to five years behind bars. Next time, know who you're sleeping with before you pretend to be anything more than the scum you are, and just hope you and I never have to talk again. I then walked out to the second most important thing in the world to me, my cherry red 2022 Mustang, and drove home with a smile on my face. Fifteen minutes later, I walked into the house. Janie was sitting at the table reading a booklet, one of a stack of booklets in front of her. I walked over, smiled, and kissed her. Sighing, she wrapped her arms around my neck and pressed herself against me as our tongues greeted each other. When I got up to catch my breath, I sank heavily into the chair next to her, realizing that I needed to talk to her. How was the game? Did you and Andrew have fun? She asked me. Andrew didn't finish watching. He got called into work. I told her. The Broncos lost by one goal in the final minutes. 
Unfortunately, I missed it because I was talking to a pain in the ass. Too bad, baby. They'll bounce back next week. Finals are still a month away, my wife said, consoling me. What kind of conversation was that? I looked at her and sighed. Cody William decided to introduce himself to me today, so we had to have a little talk. Oh, Janie stretched out, looking at me sadly. I'm sorry, love. I was hoping it wouldn't come to this. I nodded. I know, but the deed was done and we talked. I told him what was going to happen. Now you can send a message. Janie nodded and picked up her phone and typed for a minute before hitting send and putting the phone back on the table. I'm sorry, she said, and I nodded sadly. If I could look into her thoughts at that moment, I could see how upset she was that Cody had confronted me. The fact that this was the third time it had happened didn't make her feel any better, and I knew she hated every time it happened. But she loved me, her husband, like life itself, and knew I always knew what I was doing. Cody was nothing I couldn't handle. Not ten minutes later, Janie got the text message and looked at her phone and frowned. He's not taking it very well, my wife told me. He's going to make you wish you'd never been born while he sleeps with your wife in front of you. I shrugged. I'll file tomorrow. I hate it when they don't take the easy way out. Janie nodded and I opened my arms. Pushing back the chair, my wife stood up carefully. I smiled, looking at her pregnant beauty. She sat on my lap and kissed me again while I stroked her swollen belly with my hands. Even though we are identical twins, my sister has the worst taste in men, my wife said quietly. She needs to stop using you as a crutch to break up with these idiots. I laughed. Actually, this time I don't think Katie was the initiator, I said, referring to her identical twin sister. And even the tattoos they both got as teenagers were identical. Janie hated that her sister kept looking for guys with gym bodies instead of finding a guy with at least half a brain. My sister-in-law had already used me twice as an excuse to break up with guys. He saw you and I driving home from South Bank a few weeks ago, I said to my pregnant wife who, without her belly, would have the amazing abs that were mentioned earlier today. That moment was the second clue that Cody was talking about Katie. And the first was that I knew my wife and she would rip his balls off with her bare hands before she would ever cheat on me. He saw us in the Mustang and was pissed you didn't notice him in the Mercedes. I snorted. He thought you were Katie. Then he found me and decided to have a chat. Janie laughed and threw me a smoldering look. You know, I said, changing the subject. Andrew's divorce has been going on for six months now. I know he's always had a thing for Katie ever since high school. How about a barbecue Saturday night? Janie's gaze turned playful as she sensually nibbled a stray piece of cotton off the shoulder of my shirt. You never know, stranger things happen, my wife replied as we both marveled at the nudge of a small hand, reminded of the life inside her belly. Oh, 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 she said, leaning forward and kissing me again. But this she said to me, touching the small hand in return before it disappeared back inside her. Is your fault. Come and take responsibility for this. My wife then stood up and moved towards the bedroom, swaying her hips sensuously. I smiled as she winked back at me and traced the most beautiful ass in the world. Katie's man problems could wait, 